Hello and welcome to this module on the assessment of the initial situation. We will look at the data that you need to collect in order to get a comprehensive overview of the sanitation situation in your city and to be able to take informed decisions. The aim of this module is also to link the different aspects requiring data collection presented in this course. The main goals of the assessment of the initial situation are to set the scene, understand the context, get to know the stakeholders and provide enough information to start elaborating the fecal sludge management scenarios. This includes, among others, the definition of context-specific design parameters. It should allow you to make a logical plan to move forward. This phase of the planning process is therefore characterized by data collection via different means. The question is, which data and by which means? The idea is to get a snapshot of the situation. Start with a helicopter view of your city. You can take a map or look on Google Earth and start by identifying the different sentient contexts, as discussed in the previous module. What are the existing infrastructure and services? Are there sewer networks? Which type of toilets do people have? Who are the service providers and how are they organized? Where do they bring the sludge? You can start by looking at the general context, like demographics, water and hygiene, stormwater management, and climatic conditions. Then, collect data about the sanitation sector, considering the whole sanitation supply chain, as mentioned in the last module. Especially, carry out a stakeholder analysis and establish the profile and practices of manual and mechanical service providers. Further on, it is important to understand the practices at household level and, at the other end of the sanitation chain, the end-use practices and potential markets for the treatment products. Talking about stakeholders, we should know what are the financial transfers between them. For example, how much do households currently pay for emptying services? At that stage, you should check the enabling conditions. How is the government support? What is the legal and regulatory framework? What are the rules? but also where are the gaps, which are the relevant institutions and how they are organized, what are the skills and capacities, especially in terms of human resources and management, the financial arrangements, as I mentioned before, and lastly, the social cultural acceptance of the different options. The environment is rarely fully enabling at the beginning of the process, and identifying the gaps is the basis to plan for action. A lot of this information, be the type of latrines, the standards, or the stakeholders' needs and interests, will also help you to quantify and characterize the sludge to be treated and estimate context-specific design parameters for your future fecal sludge treatment plant. Talking about treatment plants, you will see if you look at the FSM from A to Z planning synthesis presented in the previous module, that it is also the time to identify potential treatment sites. As this is often a very difficult question, it is good to start as soon as possible. Often, there is no available land, land is expensive, or people do not want a treatment plant in their backyards. If you're lucky, you will have several options to choose from. But then comes the question of the level of decentralization. Shall we have one or several plants? In large urban areas, it may make a lot of sense to have several plants at different locations. The mechanical service providers should be at the core of the decision. First, they know all about existing disposal sites. Then, it is crucial to identify what are the constraints of their business, for example, problems with traffic, the average distance and duration of the trips, and the money they gain for each of them. They are the ones who can tell what is practically and financially feasible. We have to see that larger treatment plants require an average longer haulage distances from the pits, implying higher costs for the collection companies. Companies have then two choices. Either increase their tariffs for the households, which may threaten the affordability of the service, or use closer illegal disposal sites. There are examples of fixed at treatment plants which were never used because they were too far away or not accessible. We talked a lot about data, but not yet about how to collect it. 
it is not that easy to collect good quality, useful data. There is a lot of bad quality data around, and it is important to get your own primary data as much as possible. The best way to get accurate information is to get it from different sources and then cross-check. Data can be gathered through literature review, semi-structured interviews, household surveys, or qualitative field observation. We will see a few more tools in the next module, and you will find a few interview guides in the Ficus Nudge Management book. Finally, what do we do with our data? Well, we have to analyze it, and also, and that is important, communicate the results in a form that is understandable and digestible by the different stakeholders. You will get more insight in the analysis of the different data in the respective modules of this course, so we'll not go any deeper here. I would like to mention that in addition to Sandex work, there are a number of tools and toolboxes under development to help you in the collection, analysis, and visualization of your data. You may have heard about the FSM toolbox, the World Bank's Diagnostic and Decision-Making Support Tools, about the toolkit of SEPT in India, or WHO's Sanitation Safety Plans. You will find the links to this and more in the course materials, as well as dedicated modules in our MOOC on sanitation planning. Now, let me just show you two ways to share some of your results. First, a SWOT analysis. With a SWOT analysis, you systematically analyze the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for the implementation of a proper fecal sludge management scheme in your city. Strengths and weaknesses describe the existing situation, whereas opportunities and threats represent the potential that you identified. You can make this assessment more systematic by doing it for each of the enabling environment components. Secondly, you were already introduced to the sheet flow diagrams, or SFDs. This is an effective way to represent in one figure the main results of the assessment of the initial situation and provides a good advocacy tool to talk to authorities. The SFD website is there to help you make your own SFD and you can learn more about it by watching the dedicated module in our MOOC on sanitation planning. A large part of your success with a future fecal stage management scheme actually depends on the quality of the assessment of the initial situation and how it is communicated. Don't forget the importance of the human dimension of this assessment. It is the time for first contact, but also trust building, which is the best way to access information and get people on board. It is also paramount for the selection of potential sites for treatment. Now you got a better picture of how to collect data and what to do with it. I hope that this module helps you to link some of your learnings from the course that you can better visualize what an integrated approach practically is and how to assess the enabling or disabling conditions. Creating enabling conditions has a lot to do with stakeholder involvement. That's what we will see in the next module. See you then.